Now, I've done quite a few videos on the heart. I've talked about coronary artery calcification, vascular calcification, but there's one additional cause that I recently found uh, through reading a book, which I'm going to put a link down below, which I think is pretty common and I haven't made the link yet. And I think you should know about it, especially if you want to prevent um, calcification of your arteries. And this additional cause is called lactic acidosis. Now, when I mention lactic acidosis or maybe lactic acid, you might associate that with um, kind of a burning you feel after you exercise in your muscles, right? You might think of that, but lactic acidosis goes way beyond that. Lactic acidosis occurs as a byproduct of glucose metabolism, and both lactic acidosis and lactate in your blood are associated with a lot of additional problems, okay? Like sudden death from heart attack, thrombosis, which means you're clotting in your arteries, panic attacks, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, which could include a lot of other problems. Uh, even like in uh, bipolar, schizophrenia, sepsis, which is a systemic infection, certain arrhythmia problems like ventricular fibrillation and liver disease and definitely diabetes and even cancer and restless leg syndrome. But my primary focus today is to show you this connection between lactic acidosis and hypoxia in your arteries. Okay, hypoxia, that's a lack of oxygen. And then the next consequence of that is a calcification. So vascular calcification uh, can definitely come from this hypoxia, which is caused by this acid situation in your blood called lactic acidosis. And so calcification in the arteries is not just from old age. It's not just from, you know, consuming too much dietary calcium or even just a lack of vitamin K2. Now, there's two primary common reasons why someone might develop some version of lactic acidosis. One is they're just on too many carbohydrates. Too much sugar in the diet can then cause this abundance of lactate and that can develop into lactic acid. So anything that can increase the metabolism of glucose, and it's called glycolysis, like consuming too much sugar, can create this problem. The other common link that was discussed in this book, which you just need to be aware of, is an overactive sympathetic dominant situation. Uh, you're too much in the flight or fight. And basically we're talking about chronic stress. Chronic stress is very similar to constantly eating chronic large doses of sugar because stress puts you into this flight or flight mode and you're just basically using sugar, okay, as your fuel source, uh, both from adrenaline as well as cortisol. Cortisol is a hormone, adrenaline is a neurotransmitter, but another name for cortisol is a glucocorticoid because it, it uses glucose, right? But adrenaline also will activate and release a lot of sugar. And this can very easily develop this lactic acidosis situation. Metformin causes as well. Metformin has a warning sign on the label. Uh, it can cause lactic acidosis. Why? Because one of the big problems or side effects from metformin is lactic acidosis. Now, even warfarin, a very common drug to block vitamin K1 to help thin uh, your blood so you don't develop clotting, has a side effect of vascular calcification uh, because it can produce lactic acidosis. Also, statin drugs, which help block cholesterol, also have a side effect of this calcification problem as well and lactic acidosis. Also, drinking too much alcohol will do it. And even if you overtrain, if you exercise too much, you can develop a lot of lactic acid. I wouldn't say that you're going to develop calcium deposits from that, but it can definitely put you in a state of lactic acidosis. And when you have lactic acidosis, the pH of your blood starts going down. That means it's becoming acidic. And uh, probably the first symptom you're going to notice is breathing problems. It's going to be hard to breathe, hard to get oxygen, because you need a certain pH for that. Uh, you're going to feel very restless, especially in the leg muscles. But there is an effective remedy for lactic acidosis that you need to know about. If you have enough B1 thymine, chances are you probably won't even develop lactic acid in the first place. 
So of course, the deeper remedy of lactic acidosis is to find out what's causing it. Are you consuming too many carbs? Are you eating too much sugar? Well, then go on keto. Are you going through stress? Are you in this chronic flight or fight mode? Well, there's a lot of things you can do to lower that. But B1 can very effectively uh, pull you out of this lactic acidosis. And also, it, it will counter the complications from consuming high amounts of carbohydrates, as well as the complications from diabetes, as well as the side effects from being under this chronic state of sympathetic dominance or stress. B1 is the best vitamin for stress. In fact, if, I've talked about this before. When you take B1, it really helps uh, nervous agitation, uh, this buildup of energy, this restlessness. So B1 will help with that because you're actually curbing or reducing this, these effects of lactic acidosis. You're going to even breathe better when you take uh, natural B1. So B1 is really good to pull someone out of anxiety and the symptoms or side effects from lactic acidosis. So B1 can actually also help you with hypoxia, which is a lack of oxygen in your, in your vascular system. It can help balance out the pH. B1 has also been known to directly help inhibit uh, thrombosis or clotting. So it's really, really good for the heart. And of course, B1 is also good to inhibit this calcification buildup in the arteries. And we all know that consuming too much alcohol will really deplete your B1. And so that's another common cause uh, of why someone would end up with a B1 deficiency. You know, I live in a farm and we have cattle. And when we first bought this cattle, we, uh, you know, we were asking farmers around, what do we need uh, for cattle? Do we need to supplement their diet with vitamins or whatever? And um, many of the farmers around our area said, you, you should also buy uh, large amounts of uh, baking soda. And I'm like, why do you need baking soda? Oh, well, because they can develop lactic acidosis. So if you look up why a cow would develop lactic acidosis, you will find it's the side effect from consuming too many grains, okay? Too many refined carbohydrates. A cow is meant to consume grass and plants and weeds, not grains. And if a cow has lactic acidosis, they can become very depressed, uh, inactive, uh, not be around the rest of the cows. They can get diarrhea. They can get dehydration and they can die. And unfortunately, some of these farmers just go ahead and treat these cows with uh, baking soda or some type of alkalizing agent, okay? Instead of really looking at the underlying mechanism. A cow's stomach is not designed to be actually that acidic like our stomachs. It's designed to be slightly alkaline in its fermentation of grass. So this is just another example of how grains and sugar and refined carbs are not meant to be in our diet. And number three, make sure you have enough B1, natural B1, not the synthetic thiamine, but natural B1 in your diet if you potentially could have this issue. Now, I think the next most important video for you to watch would be to learn all the underlying causes of a B1 deficiency. So that way you, you, you understand the whole picture. And I put that video up right here. Check it out.